Sebastiano. That was the photo of the mic. Um, before I say uh, publish the Man's Marriage for the last time, I just want to say thank you to Helen, who's come to play for us this morning. So we will say some things we normally sing, but we will sing the Jubilati. Um, so I'm going to publish the Man's I published The Burns of Marriage between Rebecca Alexandra Vickers, single of Grange Rover Sands, and Alec Benjamin Nelson, single also of Grange Rover Sands. And this is for the third time asking. If anyone, any of you, know cause or just impediment why these two persons should not be joined together in holy matrimony, you are to declare it. And as I said, this is for the third and last time asking. That is our last wedding of ten this year, isn't it? I've got a couple of um, a couple of um, notices. Um, the food bank is next week, not this week, which is what it says on the the, the, the pew sheet. But um, so Ben will take we will take them to Grange next week. Next week we also have the licensing of. Annette Miller, who is going to be taking some services for us working with this new benefit. Um, she's, she's lived in Grange, she's worked with me on the youth group for a long time, and then she's gone off, been ordained, and has come back and been working um, with Milthorpe um, Parish, I think it was. Um, but she's now going to be licensed to work with us, which is fabulous. Um, yesterday evening, we had the most brilliant Thai supper in the parish rooms. It was packed, it was absolutely everything that a community event should be. It was just fantastic. We're all a little bit hoarse this morning because the volume was, um, was, was high to pitch over. Next Saturday we have the words of music in here, uh, which is our harvest celebration. So reading poetry and, and, and prose and, and we are slowly collecting musicians. A lot of our normal musicians are away, but people are coming forward and saying they'll play for us, which is just fantastic. And the church will be decorated for harvest for that and for um, and so next Sunday morning, it's our harvest produce. Um, anything fresh will go to, <coughs> excuse me, to Manor House um, in Kendall, who work with the, uh, the, the people who might be homeless um, or have a similar need. Um, and then anything that's um, longer lasting will go to the food bank with everything else next week. Um, we also on Saturday had our parish, second parish boundary walk uh, which six of us did. I didn't do the whole thing, but I did do some of it. Um, and we finished, <coughs> excuse me, we finished at Heft um, for that. I think, I think that's everything. Mm. I've not missed anything. No. Let us start with our first hymn, which is 391, Blessed on the Pure in Heart. Mm.
we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Dearly beloved brethren, the scripture moveth us in sundry places to acknowledge and confess our manifold sins and wickedness, and that we should not dissemble nor cloak them before the face of Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, but confess them with a humble, lowly, penitent and obedient heart, to the end that we may obtain forgiveness of the same by his infinite goodness and mercy. And although we ought at all times humbly to acknowledge our sins before God, yet ought we most chiefly so to do when we assemble and meet together to render thanks for the great benefits that we have received at his hands, to set forth his most worthy praise, to hear his most holy word, and to ask those things which are requisite and necessary, as well for the body as the soul. <coughs> Wherefore I pray and beseech you, as many as are here present, to accompany me with a pure heart and humble voice unto the throne of the heavenly grace, saying with me, Almighty and most merciful Father, we have erred and strayed from thy ways like lost sheep. We have followed too much the devices and desires of our own hearts. We have offended against thy holy Lord. We have left undone those things which we ought to have done, and we have done those things which we ought not to have done, and there is no help in us. But thou, O Lord, have mercy upon us, miserable offenders. Spare thou them, O God, which confess their faults. Restore thou them that are penitent, according to thy promises declared of mankind. In Christ Jesus you are, Lord. And grant, O most merciful Father, for his sake that we may hereafter live a godly, righteous, and sober life, to the glory of thy holy name. Amen. Grant, we beseech thee, merciful Lord, to thy faithful people, pardon and peace, that they may be cleansed from all their sins, and serve thee with a quiet mind, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Let us say the Lord's Prayer together. Our Amen. Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, in earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. Thank mm-hmm. you. 
The first reading is taken from the book of Amos, chapter 6, beginning at verse 1a. Alas, for this, sorry, thus says the Lord, the God of hosts, Alas, for those who are at ease in Zion, and for those who feel secure in Mount, Mount Samaria. Alas, for those who lie on beds of ivory, and land, land on their couches, and eat lambs from the flock, and calves from the store, <coughs> who sing idle songs to the sound of the harp, and like David, improvise on instruments of music, who drink wine from bowls and anoint themselves with fine soils, but are not grieved over the ruin of Joseph. Therefore they shall now be the first to go into exile, and the revelry of the languages shall pass away. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. I forgot the song. Please stand to say alternate verses of Psalm 146 on the inside of your cue sheet. Hallelujah, praise the Lord, O my soul. I will praise the Lord as long as I live. I will sing praises to my God while I have my being. But Open not your trust in ruins, ruins, nor any child of earth, for there is, is no help in them. Then. When they breathe their last, they return to earth, and in that day their thoughts perish. Happy are they who have God, God and Jacob for their help, whose hope is in the Lord their God. Their God. Who made heaven and earth, the seas, and all that is in them, who keeps his promises forever. And who gives justice to those who are oppressed, and food to those who hunger. The Lord sets the prisoners free. The Lord opens the eyes of the blind. The Lord lifts up those who are bowed down. The Lord loves the righteous. The Lord cares for the stranger. He sustains the orphan and widow, and frustrates the way of the wicked. The Lord shall reign forever, your God, O Zion, throughout all generations. Hallelujah. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost, as it was in the beginning, is now and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. We remain standing to say the tedium, and we'll just say the first section, which is the first six verses. We praise Thee, O God, we acknowledge Thee to be the Lord, for the earth that worships Thee is the Father everlasting. To Thee all angels cry aloud, the heavens and all the powers therein. To Thee, cherubim and seraphim, continually do cry, Holy, 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 Lord God of Zion, heaven and earth are full of the majesty of Thy glory. Please sit for our second reading. Second reading is taken from Luke, again in chapter 19, verse 19. There was a rich man who was dressed in purple and fine linen and who feasted sumptuously every day. And at his gate lay a poor man named Lazarus, covered with sores, who longed to satisfy his hunger with what fell from the rich man's table. Even the dogs would come and lick his sores. The poor man died and was carried away by the angels to be with Abraham. The rich man also died and was buried. In Hades, where he was being tormented, he looked up and saw Abraham far away, with Lazarus by his side. He called out, Father Abraham, have mercy on me, and send Lazarus to dip the tip of his finger in water and cool my tongue, for I am in agony in these flames. But Abraham said, Child, remember that during your lifetime you received good things, and Lazarus in like manner evil things, but now he is comforted here and you are in agony. Besides all this, 
between you and us, a great chasm has been fixed, so that those who might want to pass from here to you cannot do so, and no one can cross from there to us. The man who had been rich said, Then, Father, I beg you to send him to my father's house, for I have five brothers, he may warn them, so that they will not also come into this place of torment. Everyone replied, They have Moses and the prophets, they should listen to them. He said, No, Father Abraham, but if someone goes to them from the dead, they will repent. And Abraham said to him, If they do not listen to Moses and the prophets, neither will they be convinced, even if someone rises from the dead. Here I the lesson. We stand to sing the jubilati. <laughs> Yes, yes. 
steadfast in faith and active in service through Jesus Christ thy Son our Lord who liveth and reigneth with thee in the unity of the Holy Spirit one God now and forever. Amen. The second colleague for peace. O God who art the author of peace and lover of concord in knowledge of whom standeth our eternal life whose service is perfect freedom. Defend us, thy humble servants, in all assaults of our enemies, that we, surely trusting in thy defence, may not fear the power of any adversaries through the might of Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. And the third point, the grace. O Lord, our heavenly Father, almighty and everlasting God, who has safely brought us to the beginning of this day, Defend us in the same with thy mighty power, and grant that this day we fall into no sin, neither run into any kind of danger, but that all our doings may be ordered by thy governments to do always that is righteous in thy sight, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. We sing our second hymn, 426, Firmly I Believe and True. <coughs> Trickle down 
um, concept. So if you, um, for the younger people around, if you imagine a champagne tower of glasses, it's just the idea that you put uh, lots of glasses and fewer glasses and right up to a kind of triangle tower. And the top glass is the one you put champagne in. And what happens is the champagne trickles down to the other glasses. Well, the cartoon um, in relation to the current situation um, of tax changes is that the top glass, instead of being the same size as the others, is very long and thin and so it actually doesn't fill and trickle down. Um, hopefully, if, that, if you hold that image in your mind, um, we need to have that glass to be the same size and people need to allow that glass to spill over. I don't know whether you saw John and Dunstan's signs um, on the wall that have just been changed for words of music, but in the last month or two that have been talking about riches in heaven. You know, we save up riches through our faith and through worshiping God um, that, that are saved for us in heaven. That what we have on this earth is not possible to take with us. And we have readings today that are very much in line with that. We think we want things. There was another lovely quote this week um, from C.S. Lewis um, who, who said that if God had granted all the silly prayers that we had asked for, uh, where would we be now? So there's this idea that we, we have um, about being wealthy or being comfortably off or whatever. Um, and, and how important um, all, of, all of that is. And there's just one last thing before I read something from, from here. Um, I don't know whether, I mean, the Reverend Richard Cole, Coles has now retired, um, and he put on Twitter a, a lovely quote from a Bishop Lancelot Andrews, who's wearing a wig, so sort of 1600s, um, who said, he who had two coats, let him impart to him that hath none. So basically not hogging the two coats for themselves. Uh, hopefully that will fit with the readings and what I want to read from Jill Williams's book now. There have always been Christians who see success and material comfort as rewards from God. And clearly this congregation, talked about in the readings, is no exception. The writer does not urge them to give up all their wealth, but to remember where it belongs and what it is worth. It is the love of money, he suggests, that is the danger, because it leads you to value things that are essentially ephemeral. So the wealthy are to use their money for the good of others, and to, to remember that that money and status are not connected for Christians. The only kind of riches worth having are the ones that lead to life that really is life. The letter that we heard this morning sets these struggles with the lure of selfish comfort against the backdrop of God's court. All around us, the author reminds the readers, are those who have already given their testimony, bearing witness to God. At their centre stands Jesus, whose costly witness is the real measure of our own. Every time you make a decision about how to spend, how to live, imagine your actions weighed up in such company, against such a reality, that the only sovereign, the King of Kings, and the Lord of Lords. Some of us in this um, congregation will remember Mother Teresa. So Saint Teresa of Avila, a profoundly practical person, wrote in the interior castle, our Lord asks but two things of us, love for him and for our neighbour. She goes on to say, I think the most certain sign that we keep these two commandments is that we have a genuine love for others. We cannot know how, we cannot know whether we love God. We cannot know whether we love God, although there may be strong reasons for thinking so, but there can be no doubt about whether we love our neighbour or not. So this is very good and very hard advice. It is a pity that the rich man in today's gospel never had a chance to meet Teresa, Mother Teresa. Although the, the story suggests that it would have made no difference. We are not told outright why the rich man deserves to go to hell. We have to infer that it's simply because his riches shielded him to the point that he could ignore Lazarus, starving to death, to death at his gates. The rich man had every excuse not to notice him. He had servants to run his errands, and he probably usually swept through his gates on a horse or a carriage of some kind. 
his servants would know better than to let Lazarus bother their master. The problem with riches is that it is hard to remember how dangerous they are. Insidiously, they get into our systems and make us dependent upon them. Perhaps money should have a kind of Christian equivalent of a government health warning stamped upon them. But we already have Moses and prophets to warn us, so we shouldn't need that. Let us pray. O gracious and holy Father, give us wisdom to perceive you, intelligence to understand you, diligence to seek you, patience to wait for you, eyes to behold you, a heart to meditate upon you, and a life to proclaim you, through the power of the Spirit of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. We'll sing our next hymn, which is 332 for all the saints. And we're going to miss out three and five. Sorry, I didn't stop that. Is that right? <laughs>
Dear Lord, our Father, we ask that you cleanse the church of all that may hinder the spread of the gospel. We especially pray for the members of the family whose funeral Desmond Tutu's daughter was to have led. Let there be healing within the church. Give wisdom and to discern where there is offence and grace to set it right. Make your people strong in the power of prayer. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. prayer. We ask, Lord, that you would give grace to all who work for good in the world, not knowing that they are in your service. We especially pray for those people helping those in Canada with the sea surge and the floods. We ask you enlighten all who do this work with the perfect knowledge of your majesty and with power to cast out evil and promote your kingdom. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Strengthen us in prayer so that we may in our families and in all our lives be sustained by your continual presence. Lord, guide us as we intercede for those known to us who are distressed and afflicted. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We ask, Lord, for your comfort and that you relieve the sick, especially those who have asked for our prayers. And that you bless the Church's ministry of healing. Grant perseverance to all who have been come, to become discouraged in prayer. And we pray at this time of the election in Italy for the best outcome for that country. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord, accept the prayers which we offer for those who have died. Especially at this time of national mourning, help us to keep and learn from that grief. Though we see them no longer, Unite us with them in our intercessions, that we may be one in your love. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Almighty God, you have given us grace at this time with one accord to make our common supplications unto thee, and dost promise that when two or three are gathered together in thy name, thou wilt grant their requests. Fulfill now, O Lord, the desires and petitions of thy servants, as may be most expedient for them, granting us in this world knowledge of thy truth, and in the world to come, life everlasting. Amen. Amen. Let's say the grace together. The grace, grace of our Lord, Lord Jesus Christ, Christ and, the and the love of God, and, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit, be with us all, evermore. Amen. We sing our last and offertory hymn, 443, God is our strength. To the damp busters march.
the blessing of God, which passeth all understanding. Keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God, and of his Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost, be amongst you and remain with you always. Amen. Amen. <clears throat>